If you don't have a great presence where you're directing people to you, like your donation form, your donate button, or your crowdfunding campaign site, or your peer-to-peer -peer financing, then you're really leaving a lot of money on the table. You're essentially saying, hey, I want to direct all my efforts on the first two steps and then not think about the last step, which is arguably one of the most important steps. So what we can do with Cosbox is we can definitely help you raise more with less, improve your clunky donation page, or even help you acquire new donors through our peer-to-peer -peer financing tools. Um, I do want to offer one thing here is that a lot of us, a lot of attendees today can't make it for a whole session uh, because on the East Coast, we're creeping up on the afternoon on a Friday. Uh, on the West Coast, people are getting lunch right now. So if you want the notes and recordings, you can always purchase it for 25 bucks today. It goes up tomorrow to $50. It gives you access to our professionally written notes as well as our summit videos, which will slice up per session so you can easily access that at any time. All right. Well, without further ado, I want to introduce our next speaker, Rain Bennett. So Rain Bennett is with Six Second Stories. Um, he spoke at Cosvox a few months ago around storytelling, and he did just just an incredible job. The audience feedback was amazing. People loved his presentation. And we had a few questions earlier this day that I think Rain would do a great job in, uh, just because he is a video production guru. So he creates stories, he creates videos, and he knows all the ins and outs of how you can leverage video storytelling and storytelling in general to power your nonprofit social cause, your reach, as well as your digital fundraising. So I wanna hand it over to Mr. Bennett to share with us um, how to master the art and science of storytelling. Hey, thanks, Rob. Uh, are you guys able to see my video? Hey, there I am. Uh, first of all, I just want to take a second to, can we all just uh, recognize Rob's shot composition there with his background? Like that video frame, I'm totally jealous. I got to step my game up. Like somebody helped you with that. <laughs> yeah, we have somebody in our team kind of just frame it a little bit. It looks good, brother. It worked. It worked. I put a little bit of effort into this summit. So yeah. Here I am. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, I'm excited to be here. What's up, all my beautiful people out there listening? Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kick into it because I really want to leave enough time for us to to talk. Rob already alluded to that there were some questions or some some things out there that maybe I could address, and I'd love to do that. And I want that to be uh, I want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Hmm. Rob, where is the share, where is the share screen button? I'm losing yeah, it. The share screen button is that green button probably on the bottom. Oh, the one, the bright one that says share. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one, that one, that one. Okay. Boom. You guys able to see my presentation? Yeah, we see your presentation. Great. All right. Video. Audio is loud and clear as well. Boom, kicking into it. Okay, so the Digital Fundraising Summit, that's what we're here today for. I'll tell you a little story. Um, just a few weeks ago, I was at a filmmaking event. Most of the people that were attending this, it was a, 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 a nonprofit, a, a Southern Documentary Fund's artist convening. So most of the filmmakers there were beginning filmmakers. I've been doing this about 15 years at this point, but I still attended and I was uh, a little late had some family issues and I was there for the speed mentoring round because there's a film that I'm working on that we're trying to get on UNC TV, which is the local uh, PBS station here in, in North Carolina. I haven't done that before. So I was specifically interested in learning about grants for documentary filmmaking. Uh, so when she was trying to pair me up with a mentor, she asked me, the director asked me, what are you interested in? And I said, oh, um, well, I know how to, you know, make a movie. I'm just, uh, I'm interested in grants and fundraising. And she kind of like chuckled and rolled her eyes and just was like, yeah, join, join the club. Like that's everybody in here. How do we, how do we, how do we get money to support our great ideas? Having a good idea is not hard to do. Um, finding the money to pursue that idea is really hard. And so we're all here today for a common goal to learn how to raise money, right? And so I just wanna make it clear that that's not unique. So all of us are competing for the same thing. And my goal 
for us here today is to get specific and um, see how we can make ourselves unique. We want to get as small as possible and not just say, I want to raise money or I want to help change the world, but figure out how we're going to do it by focusing on the goal, the very specific objective. Before we move on, I want to go ahead and poll everyone. Just send your comments, your names, what you do and for what organization and most importantly, why you're attending today. We can go ahead and have those questions coming on. And so when we get to the Q and A, we can already have them banked up and we can address them. And if something comes up as I'm talking, uh, you can send a question then. So storytelling is a way to deliver information, to get something across. But so often I see people just talking about themselves or their organizations or numbers and stats and I'm here to tell you that you have to package it up in a pretty little box with a bow on it and, and touch people here in their hearts. It's, it's got to be wrapped up in emotion. But we are trying to achieve certain things. So we're going to talk about storytelling in general today. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about video storytelling but a lot of these, most of these apply to whether you're doing it written or via audio or in person live. So every video should do one or a couple or hopefully all three uh, of three things. One, entertain, two, inspire, or three, educate. Some of you who know about content have probably uh, heard these before. And the reason that we put entertain first is, is crucial. And this applies to filmmaking or television as well. At the end of the day, this doesn't mean it has to be funny or silly or devalue your purpose or your mission, but it has to be enjoyable, even if it's about a heavy topic. And so again, I want to reiterate, it doesn't mean this has to be like funny, but it does have to capture their attention. There's a lot of competition these days for what we watch. And then ideally, it should inspire or educate them. But first and foremost, it has to be something that people are interested in watching for whatever amount of time that is. Um, so when I did the last cause Vox webinar and just when I do any workshops, I, I, I hear people's struggles and what they're going through. And I know a lot of you are probably saying similar things. We know we need to do storytelling. We just, we don't know where to start. We don't know how to go about it. We don't know the most effective ways. So there's a couple of problems, excuse me. A couple problems that I see over and over and over again. One, we are so fearful of failing or something not working as, as much as, as we want it to because we're all, you know, trying to accomplish, you know, working, climbing up this hill, right? And really trying to make things happen. And it's frustrating when it doesn't. I get that. But oftentimes, because of that fear, we don't do anything. And that's the biggest problem. I've heard a few people today talk about just take that first step. And that's something that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit on several times because that's so important. Just get started, try things out, and adjust along the way. Two, there's a lot of different options these days. There's a lot of different platforms. There's a lot of different tools. There's a lot of different ways to tell stories. And so many times that brings people back to the first problem, which is they're overwhelmed. And so they don't do anything. Three, we're seeking tools that do the work for us. I'm going to level with you very clearly right now. There is no one all-purpose tool. There's no fix-all to any of this. It's going to take work. Our goal is to figure out how to make it effective and efficient for us. And my thought, very strong thought on that, is that we need to start with the objective and the goal and the end in mind and then break it down. Okay, now how are we going to achieve that specific objective of this video story or of this video? So you're going to just have to get out there and, and do the work, try things out, trial and error. And so don't look for the tools that are going to make it easy for you. Work on being, being able to be a good storyteller so that whatever tools you have access to or at your disposal, you can use. That is my goal for anybody is to understand that whether I have a phone or a pen or just 30 seconds of somebody's time, I can still use the art and science of storytelling to, to 
create impact and hopefully inspire action. Uh, one, or the next one, we think there is only one story, our brand story, and that's it. I deal with that with clients all the time. I even had a question from the last Causebox webinar, how do we tell this the all-encompassing story because we have so many programs? I'm here to tell you, you shouldn't be just telling one all-encompassing story. If you have so many programs, you need to break it down and tell stories for each of those. And even for each of those programs, there's so many, there's a multitude of stories within that. So I don't think that you need to tell one video story and then you've done your job. That's you trying to make it easier for yourself. And in this day and age, it doesn't work anymore. Um, and then lastly, we know what to do, tell stories. We know why to do it because stories inspire action more than data does, but we don't know how often. So that's what I'm going to try to get to today is how do we actually do that? This is one of the biggest, the biggest things I want you to take home with what makes a story versus a speech or a, or a message, right? Stories are about change. Something changes in the character that we're following and overcoming obstacles. And that change is required to overcome that obstacle. And hopefully your organization or your cause is what gives the opportunity to, for the character to make that change. I hope that makes sense. But this is, this is, if I couldn't tell you anything else today, this is what I want you to take home for what makes a good story. Something happens along the way. There's a turning point. There's a pivotal moment where the struggle that this person, the obstacle that they faced, they overcome that by making a change. That's called character development. So that's the biggest thing. Not, we're not talking about, hey, we're trying to save the oceans. We're not talking about these big picture ideas. We're talking about what is the point where that person changed or made a change. And so to tell good stories, you need to think about those people that you serve. I know this is cliche, this expression, but it's so true. It's not about you. It's about them. It's about the people that you serve. And so to think about the stories that would be effective, I have people ask me all the time, what are the most uh, effective kinds of stories to tell? Which means what makes people come out of their pockets, right? That's what we're trying to get to. There's money available out there. You just got to find it and find a way to get people inspired enough to take that action. And the way to do it is through empathy, truly putting yourself in the minds of the people that you're serving or that you're speaking to. You're a person, if and you have money and probably not a completely disposable amount of it, right? So if, if you were to donate to something or pay for something or purchase something, what's, what's the trigger in your head that would make you make that decision? What's the purpose that needs to be served in your life that would make you do that, right? So empathy, if there is one fix all, it's that understanding what the people are going through, the struggles that they're going through. And then you want to tell them a story that shows them the changes they need to make to overcome those struggles, right? Okay, so <clears throat> how, to, how to apply that? I like to start with the problem. We already alluded to this. What is the problem that needs fixing? And again, try to get smaller. What are we trying to accomplish? What's the struggle that the characters are going through? Two, identify your characters. Who, who is the person? What did they look like? Doesn't mean there's only one type, but for this story, who is the character that you're trying to speak to? Okay, I know another cliche, marketing cliche, if you market to everybody, you market to nobody. Same thing applies here. You can't make a video that speaks to everyone. You want to find a video that is unique, but is relatable to, to many people for sure. But everything today is about getting specific, right? Which leads me to the next thing. Keep it simple, stupid, the KISS rule. Uh, oftentimes, we try to fit in all those programs into, into one story. Keep it simple. One message, one simple call to action. Okay? Small stories. Four. I don't know why I held up two. I meant four. Uh, know your goal and be clear about it. Know where you're going. Know what you want the, the, the story to do and be clear about what you want people to do. You tell a great story, you'll inspire all these things. I left a lot of the science of storytelling out of today because I'm a nerd and I realize not everybody loves that, uh, but I can show you plenty of, of, of data on why it works. But when you conjure up all these feelings and emotions in people, you got to direct that somewhere. So you got to be clear about your call to action. It's also not the first time you've heard that today. So take note of that. And then lastly, 
there is data that needs to get across, of course, but you weave that into your story. You don't need to, people can't relate to numbers. A hundred thousand people are, are starving. That, I get that, but one, it seems too big for me to be able to help. And two, I can't relate to a hundred thousand people. But if you tell me the story of John or Jennifer, then that could be my brother, my cousin, my aunt, my uncle. That could, that's something I can relate to. So when you use data or statistics, you want to package them in that, that little package of emotion that we talked about, right? That's how you're going to deliver them effectively. Here's a little storytelling map that I use with clients. Um, you guys should be able to, to screenshot this or I'm sure you'll, you'll have copies of the, um, of the presentation. So it just helps you identify certain aspects of the story. I'm not going to go through all of these because we're going through them in the presentation, but people, who does it serve? What is the goal? And again, be specific, as specific as possible. To raise money is not the goal. That's way too vague. And people won't respond to vague goals either. So it needs to be tied to something that's happening right now. Why is, does it have to happen right now is what you should ask yourself. Uh, three, the plot. We're going to break that down a little bit more in terms of structure of stories. And then four, the place. Where does this live in the world? We can't put them all. They all aren't going to work on every platform. So you need to, to know where you're going to go, basically. All right. How are we doing on time? Ten minutes in? Okay. Um, message and story are not the same thing. I had a recent client, very recent, uh, and I won't throw them under the bus, but I will tell the story. And I asked the client, because we were going into that classic problem of like, we're fitting in too much. There's way too many characters. There's way too many things we're talking about. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what's the story here? Because there was no narrative. There was a lot of different people that had great stories. So I'm seeing all this opportunity. And the client said, oh, the story is we, we want to give kids hope for the future. These were kids that came from um, bad backgrounds. Some of them dealt with really heavy uh, abuse and, and emotional issues. And uh, the work that the, that the organization did was amazing. There's a lot of great stories to tell. But giving kids hope for the future it's not a story. That's a message. And this is very common with videos and it has been for 10, 10 plus years is we tell a story that's going to make you feel good, but it doesn't really, or we, we make a video that, that makes you feel good and tells a little bit about what our organization does, but it doesn't tell a story. Okay. Now a story can have a message in it, but a story is about a character that goes through some change that is experiencing uh, struggles and obstacles and conflict, right? So that's just a common problem that I see people do all the time. That and she, and, and the client was calling it. She she was saying, uh, "Well, the story is we want you know we want to give kids hope for the future." I'm like, "All right, that's okay, not the same thing." So, what makes it a story? Um, structure, the way you deliver it. Now, this is a very classic structure, the three the three act structure. There are many ways to do this. But we're going to start with the basics. Like anything, you master the basics first, and then you can be creative. You can add advanced moves. You can break the rules or bend the rules a little bit. But for our purposes, when I'm, we're not all here going to be filmmakers or, or, or something like that, but we want to just tell good, simple stories that speak to the hearts of the people listening. This is the perfect structure to start with, and it's just three parts. There's a status quo. There is the way things are right? And that's not always great or even good, but it's good enough. You know, here's, here's, you know, once upon a time, this is where things were. It's a stasis, right? Just the status quo. And then boom, something happens that takes us, takes the character out of that. That is a problem. The inciting incident, which leads us into act two. This is where the struggle starts, right? This is where the conflict is presented and the problems that the, that the hero, the character is going to face, this is where they're going through all of these. And they meet allies along the way, and it's ups and downs like a roller coaster. And they, there's various, you know, smaller problems and villains that they face. And the tension keeps rising higher and higher and higher and until the point where that change, that true character development is required at the climax, the highest point of tension. That is the point where we see 
the character overcome the obstacle by making a change, a, a final stand, a, a decision that they make. And a really creative way to tie yourself into that is being the agent for that change. So if I'm dealing with these problems and ABC organization came along and gave me the solution so that I could make the change necessary to overcome the obstacle, man, that is, that's what we're looking to do. Okay. You can tell stories about yourself and your own organization, but I, I urge you to think about how you can tell the story of your organization and what it's and the work it's doing in the world by or through the stories of the people you impact and serve. Super, super effective. When you ask me, when people ask me what's the most impactful kind of storytelling, that, that is. So three act structure, beginning, middle, and end, status quo, conflict, resolution. Here's a story spine. Uh, a lot of storytelling professors use this. Pixar kind of made it famous. It's the, the classic kind of breakdown. Once upon a time, there was dot, dot, dot. That's the status quo. And every day, blank happens still in that, in that stasis until one day, boom, a triggering, in, inciting incident. And until one day, a problem arose. And because of that, boom, 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 because of that, boom, 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 until finally a change was made and here's the outcome. That's just a very simple way to kind of break it down. And you can use that. Literally, you can fill in the blanks when you're thinking of the stories that you want to you want to tell. Once upon a time, there was, you know, a kid suffering from, you know, emotional abuse at home. And every day, blah, blah, blah. You can do the rest. So who is the hero of your brand story? It's It's not you. Joseph Campbell made the hero's journey popular and you, we don't need to go too deeply into that, but think star Wars or Lord of the Rings, something like, like that. That's a classic. Those are classic examples of the, the hero's journey and where we come into this when we're telling stories as businesses or organizations is we're not the hero. It's not about us. Remember it's about them. We're the guru. We're the mentor that leads them to the promised land, right? That's how I want you to think of this. It is always about the people you serve. Now, that being said, um, there are stories that we can tell um, that aren't just about the people that we serve. The success story, who you impact, I think that is absolutely hands down one of the most effective kinds of stories you can tell. But there's certainly stories about us and our organizations that are important too and convey what we want it to. We still want to keep the people that we serve in mind and not just, you know, talk about ourselves and our accomplishments and why our cause is so great and why you should give us money, right? So the self story is what we do. Um, and again, I want you to think of, we're not just talking about the message, here's what we do, but, but what happened? What led you to this place, right? There's a reason that you do what you do. Very similarly, but, but a slight difference, the mission story, the why. That's going back even further. Why is this something that you're involved with, right? If you are working for a nonprofit that, is dealing with kids with emotional abuse. What led you there? What here in your heart? You know, you could have chosen a lot of different paths and a lot of different jobs that may have been easier jobs, but there's something in you that makes you do the work that you do. That's what you want to tap into because that's what people can relate to, right? When they understand your why. Next one, the origin story. Also, just want to say, there's a lot more stories in these. These are just five that I use with clients that are, that are really good and really effective and usually pretty simple for people to unveil. Uh, the next one, your origin story, how you got started. Oftentimes, that's uh, a story of, of overcoming something. It's not easy to start a business. It's not easy to start an organization. So a lot of times, people will get behind you uh, when they hear your origin story of how everything you're doing came to be. Uh, next, behind the scenes story. This is one that is growing in popularity. I really love it. It is definitely the most challenging for people because it requires the most vulnerability. This is when you tell the story of what it is uh, that you do or how you do it, what behind the scenes. So you're giving them a peek behind the curtains and you have to be completely vulnerable because it's not always pretty and you don't always win. It's not always like successful because there's conflict in your story too. Right? So I think though that is a really effective way to show people again, your why show them that it's not always easy to do what I do, but because we are focused on our goal and our mission we overcome those obstacles and that can be really powerful for people. But again, 
it's tough for some people to tell those stories because you have to be comfortable enough to open and open yourself up and let people kind of see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Go smaller, whatever you're thinking in your story and your objective or your goal, go smaller. Everybody wants to go big and thinks only about the big goals. We want to change the world. We want to end hunger in the world. Let's take something like that. Okay. That's, that's great. But that's, I mean, that's not, I don't think that's even possible not to be a pessimist, but it's too big. And it's also people can't relate to that. We want to feed a hundred families in the Durham area over the next three months. That is a tangible, realistic goal that can be quantified and, and measured. That's a lot different. That doesn't mean after those three months you stop because your big goal is still to end world hunger, right? But you have to do it one step at a time and you should bring people along and tell the stories in those same small steps. So use a micro story of one person or one journey to tell the macro issue or talk about the macro issue. Go smaller, niche down as they say, right? All right. Um, there's a lot of places that we can tell video stories. Again, these all don't have to be video stories. And some of you know all these. I'm just going to briefly, I'm not going to insult your intelligence, tell you what Facebook is. But I'll just talk briefly about where you can be effective and how, at least from my experience. And there's, again, this is not a one size fits all. So there's a lot of trial and error involved in, in all of this stuff. But again, I've said it 10 times already. Think about your people. Where are your people? So third one down, just looking at Snapchat, there's, you know, depending on your organization, you may have nobody there. Depending on your organization, you may have a lot of your audience there. Okay. Facebook um, is skewing a little bit older these days, but it's still, there's still a lot of people there and posts are still pretty good. If you have a public page, they're not giving a lot of attention to, to posts unless you put some, you ante up and put some money behind. Groups uh, at the moment are doing pretty pretty well, actually. They are pr promoting that. And another way, um, they really were pushing Facebook Live a few years ago. And depending on um, your organization and what you do, this still could be a really impactful way. I do a series for a client that is a rare cancer foundation. And every month we do a Facebook Live with a leading specialist, a leading doctor in the, in the country uh, where patients and caregivers can have essentially a one-on-one -on -one with that doctor. And again, this is a rare disease. So your general physician doesn't know much about it. So that's very important for these people. Um, so doing that live session is, is, is really effective It might not work for everybody, but it really works for, for them. Uh, Instagram, the feed is still good. You're limited to, to 60 seconds, uh, in a feed video. However, they just finally made that, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, they basically made it really easy to attach that to IGTV, Instagram television, where you can have longer form videos. And so you can put your IGTV video in your feed. And then there's a nice button that says click to play more. So if you're telling a good story in those 60 seconds, but it's a three minute video, people will take that action if you got them hooked in there. And then Instagram stories, uh, I think are probably the, the place with the most opportunity at the moment. It's set up for you to do it in pieces. And I even, there's a blog that I have that I screenshot and I even post that on Instagram stories in like six or seven screenshots so that people can read it that way. And I have a ton of people consume that, that article every week in that method. So that's an easy way you can just do video talking, talking to camera and tell a video story. You don't, all these don't have to have high production value. If you tell a good story, you don't have to have expensive camera equipment or hire a professional editor and make this flashy cut. It's all about the ability to tell the story. Snapchat, I don't use it a lot, but there's a lot of opportunity there. The reason my company is six second stories is because we help people try to tell stories in that short amount of time, because there's a lot of places where you can buy six second ads, YouTube, now Snapchat, now Twitter, uh, and Instagram. So if you can tell a story effectively in, in that amount of time, you're really doing some damage. LinkedIn is a really good place for opportunity for video because it's still fairly new and you get a lot of engagement and a lot of views. And if, uh, if you put money behind it or put an ad there, it costs a little bit more than say Facebook, but the conversion is better. 
people are in LinkedIn for, for professional business reasons, not just to like watch cat videos, right? YouTube still kind of the king of video. Um, long form does really well there. And, uh, and there's also a lot of opportunity to do ads. And here's a couple other places that aren't just social media. The, whole, the rest of them are social media is your email list. When you're emailing people, people love to press a button, give them a big play button right in the middle of the email list with a little bit of text and convey your information that way. People love to consume their content, their information via video, especially now. And that's not going away anymore or any, anytime soon. And then your website, uh, used to be, there'd be one impact video or brand story video on a website. Your video is, I mean, your website is a whole landscape of opportunity for video stories or just text stories. You know, your about us page, that is the perfect place for you to tell your what story or your why story and not just say, we do this, this, and this. That's boring. Why do you do it, right? That's what we want to hear. That's what we can relate to. That's what we can get behind. Oops. Okay. Um, I'm hoping I'm, I'm leaving enough time, Rob, because we, I know we started a little bit late, but we are nearing the end. I just wanted to reiterate a few things and then give you guys enough time to ask me some questions. One, inaction is the enemy. Take a chance, be brave, put yourself out there and try to tell stories and don't give up after the first one, okay? And go ahead and plan out when you're going to do the rest so that when the first one doesn't perform well, which 99% chance it won't, you don't just give up, okay? Keep, keep taking those steps, but don't let the fear of failure prevent you from doing anything. Two, master the basics. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. As you get better, you'll learn what works. You'll learn new tricks, and then you add them onto anything. It's just like fitness. It's just like finance. It's just like anything in life. Master the basics. The best of the best have mastered the basics. Three, be specific. Make, go smaller. Go smaller. Four, the first big thing I said, stories are about change. What is the change that happens in the person or people that we are following in the story? Focus on those that you seek to impact. And then finally, you have all the tools that you need to start right now. You don't, there is no equipment that you have to have to do this sort of thing. Most of us have a phone. Put that to use. It can do a lot of damage. You do not need all the gadgets and gadgets. People love to get fascinated with what's the best thing to do this. This is the best thing. This is the tool that you need to work on right here. Empathy, understanding people, and learning how to speak to them in a way that makes them want to take action. If we keep telling stories, that is how we change the narrative. I can't say this loudly enough. And the bad people out there, they know this. Telling stories is how you take control of the narrative and change people's minds about something and inspire action, okay? We have to keep telling the story so that we show the good that we want to do in the world. Uh, that's my presentation. I do have a little gift. I gave it for the last webinar. Uh, I have 52 storytelling tips and a nice, easy to download PDF. You can go to the link at the bottom. There's the other places you can stay in touch with me. If I can't get to your question today, send me an email. Or, met, or a private message on any of my social media. Go to Six Second Stories and see the kind of stuff that we're doing. Uh, and I also have, I'll go back to this, but I also have a podcast about storytelling and many of my guests are nonprofit marketers. So you can scrub to that and see, um, see any episodes that may speak to you a little bit more. We've had all kinds of amazing marketers and filmmakers and story uh, or video game writers and all kinds of people there talking about how to tell effective stories. Uh, okay. How much time do we have, Rob? Uh, we have about one minute. So. Oh, brutal. Yeah. I, I think thought what we, do is we can do one question. And if you have time, uh, maybe what you can do is uh, you can answer some of the Q&A that people have uh, chatted in during your session. Yeah. After, as well as some of the chats. So a lot of folks, ton of questions around storytelling. So let's go with this. This is one of the first questions we've got. Uh, and it's around, if you have a minimal budget, how can you really do video storytelling at a small nonprofit? Right here. Just, just tell the story or have someone tell the story. That, that's why we went over like the basics and the structure is just so you know what a story is. So you can coach somebody if you're featuring them or you can just, a lot of us aren't com comfortable on camera and I get that. 
Um, but just knowing the basics, but we all have, n- nobody has an endless budget, right? We all have a minimal budget. So that goes back to that thing I said, where don't let that prevent you from doing something, right? So we all have the ability to do that. And as you learn more and learn about filmmaking, filmmaking, if you're doing video stories, you'll learn how to use lighting and you'll learn how to use better audio, which is going to help and get better. But at the end of the day, you have a tool right here that, that you can use. You don't need a lot of equipment. As you go along, add little new tricks and tools into your bag, but start with the basics, start simple. And it also, it's a learning process. So you, you will get better, but you'll never get better if you don't take the first step. Yeah, I really love that. I especially love kind of how you're focusing on uh, not kind of the, the best camera in the world, the best audio, not the equipment, but really on the heart and empathy. Yeah, here's the thing. The tools change every day in this industry, especially now. Every year there's a new camera that's better than the one before. So it's always going to change. What I want people to do is to be able to use, because this is a timeless skill. We've been telling stories for trade and for trust for thousands, thousands of years as humans. So this isn't going anywhere. This tool will change in 10 years. Who knows what we'll have, right? So that's why I don't want people to harp on that because they're going to have to relearn something every year. Not saying don't learn about cameras. Of course do it. But I want you to cultivate this timeless skill of storytelling. Yeah. And one tip I just want to share with our audience today is in order to, you can test a whole bunch of stories very cheaply and yeah. you test it through email. So yeah. you can write a subject line. You can write like a short story via email and you can just see how many people open based yeah. on your, your few characters in your subject line of the email you blast out to a segment of your subscribers. And what you can also do is you can test kind of the short story to include in the email and how many people actually click on a link to learn more. So then yeah. you can cycle through a few stories, test it a little bit, and then really hone in on what people like. And, know, and it identifies with the folks. And on your videos, uh, depending on what platform you use, use them on, you can see when people start tuning out. <laughs> so if you lose them in the first 10 seconds, you know, okay, I got to do something to hook them in there. Yep. Cool. Well, Rain, thanks so much for your time today. Um, if you do me a favor, stay on for a few minutes. Sure. Uh, we have a ton of questions around story and video that I think you're the best person to answer those questions with. Uh, and also, if you can do us a favor and just include some of the links that you shared uh, yeah. in your presentation. So I want to make sure that everybody on today, as well as uh, the thousands of folks that signed up, are able to access the links um, when they watch your presentation. Cool. So just like in the chat box, answer some questions and then add the links. Yeah. In the Q and a, as well as the chat box. If oh yeah. Can. I see that as well. Cool. Yeah. We'll do. Thanks everybody for tuning in and hit me up. I am uh, you know, don't be a stranger. All right, Rain. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Well, thank you all today for staying on with us at the digital fundraising summit. Uh, I just want to take one minute to share with you a few things. So uh, I want to thank some of our sponsors, Harbor, Compliance, as well as Joe Goresh. I want to thank all of our speakers, including the next speaker, Allison Glazer from Whole Well. I just want to share with you, we do have a digital fundraising course that you can take. It takes you $0 to $10,000 uh, in 30 days for $4.99. Check us out. We'll include those links. And again, this summit is hosted by Cosvox. We're a digital fundraising platform for nonprofits. I am one of your co-hosts, 